Hello and welcome to Jigsy Shed. Now, this video is different to my normal ones, only because I've run into an issue and I've got some exciting news to share. So, I got this lathe back in 2017, second hand. It's uh, Sharnwood W811, but it's so old that even Sharnwood doesn't have any information about it anymore. But all, all my wood turning projects have been made on this and I have worked it hard. So it's no wonder that the motor has started to go. But um, although it never generated big talk, my last two projects, the yarn bowl and the food bowl, really showed that as it would just slow down as I was making a cut. So just to show also, if I start it up, that should on its lowest speed spin at 850 revolutions. That is not it. So to get it going, spin it by hand. With a weight on there, that's even harder and I cannot get it going on my top speed. So also, don't try this at home, but um, I can put my hand on there and basically easily bring it to a stop. So it should not be doing that. So I have decided to take the plunge and get myself a new lathe. So this video is all about unboxing that new lathe and having a go. But don't worry, I will some point take this motor out uh, fix it up and repurpose it for something else, but that's a project for another time. Anyway, let's get to unboxing my new lathe. Well, I got the Record Power Coronet Herald from DM Tools. Um, obviously, not opened this box yet. Quite heavy, um, but the guy delivering it made it look like it was nothing um, well, I had quite a bit of fun time to get it to the workshop so belt uh, power pack and then as always with the record power a few different manuals in different languages Power cables, so um, two pin and three pin, so the three pin from the UK. Okay, there we go. I think that's the um, knockout bar and also an adjuster. I can't uh, know how to get this bit down. Right, so there's the motor with its controls, um, tool rest, uh, live center, a couple of fixing bits. Oh, we'll soon find out what they're all for. Right, here on this part, because it's completely cast iron heavy put that down there for now get better purchase on it outside now that's going to need some cleaning it's got all the uh, grease that's for storage on it and things so we'll just need a bit of cleaning up because otherwise I can see that getting quite mucky when there's sawdust on it okay. so this will be mounted to the workbench um, so I didn't go for the leg option as I don't know really have the space, but um, I then had to purchase some bench feet. So that should be in this package. And that's a number of fixing bolts there. And then, there we go. It's one. And then the other. All of that. Let's go away in a bit. 
So the main thing is going to be to decide on where to position it on the workbench. Obviously, it's a lot smaller than the um, lathe I had before, um, or shorter, shall I say. So um, I'll be claiming back quite a bit of workbench space, which is good. Obviously, you can get the extension on this, but to be fair, I haven't, even on the other lathe, didn't do some uh, any piece more than 30 centimeter spindles. Um, 40 centimeters maybe but um, which this one would be able to do so just gonna have to find out how to where to fix this and if I've got all the right bolts for it to fix it to the bench so I'll get this all um, cleaned up and then bring you back for when I'm mounting it to the bench and um, assembling it all well after cleaning it up I had a bit of a look around to see what the setup will be and decided obviously going to mount the feet to the lathe first and then move it around to see what's the best location for it because I also need to make sure that the motor will have clearance when I swing the headstock and my chisel rack may need to move as well but firstly coming to the mounting the feet to the lathe the bolt that they gave has 8 mil um, hex heads now my allen keys only went up to 6 mil so I had to buy some uh, more but let's get that fixed and then we'll move to the next stage so with this you do get a um, spring um, washer um, to obviously stop the loosening of the vibrations and then just a standard washer on top of that. So that just unscrews nicely out of there. Uh, so you will need that for access to get the belt on as well. Uh, screwdriver just here to undo this bit. So the motor should slide in on that part. To there and now where do I put that? And this one comes through, locks that in place there, and then just as nut, it's got a nylon um, ring in it, just onto this bottom part. So that's the number nineteen. It would help if I go the right way. Oh, let's get the chisel back off there. Alright, so for it to completely swing to sit um, over the uh, workbench, it needs just a little bit more space but that's not an issue i will um add on an extra piece of wood there so the issue i have is that the bench mounting feet came with bolts that's actually too short for mounting it to a bench instead they meant to mount them to the legs that you can buy but i then went and purchased some longer bolts so these should be able to go through and fix properly to the workbench so I just got to drill the holes. are M10 I can just use the uh, nuts and washers from them so yeah so also included are these two little um, spacers but again they're not for mounting to the workbench from what I could see they were for the feet um, so so you don't need to use these Alright, 
that's uh, power. So the lathe comes with the faceplate already on the headstock, um, the prong to drive and the life center. But the faceplate um, has a little locking um, screw there, which with a two and a half mil Allen key, you can hex key, you can undo. Now, I did find that it can be a bit tight to undo. And even if you put the spindle lock on, it won't come. So I have made just a little bar that with two screws that will go into this holes in there, the screw holes, and just with a little bit of uh, leverage comes off quite easily. Now what I did find is obviously the chuck that I've got uh, from Rutland's, it's uh, one, by, one inch by eight TPI, but this lathe is a M33 by 3.5 um, screw thread, so too big for my chuck. Uh, which is a bit of a pain because obviously having spent bought this just now don't have the resources to get a big chuck at the moment that will fit this so i went to rutland's and got the adapter so it's a 33 by 3.5 female to a 1 by 8 um, tpi uh, male adapter so that will just go on nicely there but there's just a few nuts here that I just have to undo um, just so it will come on and that let's take that off we'll just screw on there nicely and then just lock this in place again this is just with the 2.5 mil hex key And then the chuck, um, obviously it doesn't have its jaws in place yet, I will do that later. But that will just screw on into place there. Obviously the only thing you find with this, with the adapter, is that it, the chuck is now further from the lathe um, than you would normally have it. So I won't be necessarily be doing big pieces with this, as I don't want to put too much weight further away from the headstock. Though um it will give me a chance to get going make make some of the bits that i've been making and then eventually get a bigger chuck um that will allow me to do um bigger bigger projects really so start up on this is fairly easy um again obviously just power on up turn the stop off and it will come on obviously i've got it on the second belt so you've got to make sure that belt ratio is set to the right one and that is the speed of 140 up to 1868 so if i put it in the slowest part switch it on and starts going there and then speed it up and then it will slowly go up to the top speed there running fairly nice and quiet in comparison to my old lathe um, and then switch it off obviously when done just flip, push that down switch it off and that's it uh, nice and simple so if you need to go into the um, higher torque or um, lower speeds then uh, put the belt into position one uh, if you want it fast faster um, can just put it into position three by opening up the hatch um, releasing the tension nice and simple but for most parts uh the middle rate um middle ratio should work absolutely fine anyway i think it's about time i give it a little go and and make a quick little project on this
Well, there you go. There's the first project on my new lathe, a little ash change bowl. This was such a lot of fun to make, and what can I say? Such a big step up for my old lathe. There was no slowing down of the motor as I was making cuts. The banjo and um, tool vest are so easy to get into position, and the variable speed makes such a difference. And love the um, swiveling headstock uh, for getting into the bowl as well. But also, there's a little feature here of the, with the indexing system, the window. Um, that is operated by the le lever here. Um, I will definitely be using that, um, especially with the yarn balls. Um, obviously, I had to uh, add to my workbench because um, this needs 47 centimeters to the front of the foot from the wall uh, for the headstock to completely spin. But um, yeah, what can I say? It's a brilliant piece of equipment, and I will definitely be having a lot of fun with this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and if you've not done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.